What's up everyone? It's your girl Stephanie and today we have a favorites. When was the last time I did a favorites? I don't even know. I'm not even sure if I even did one in 2021, but I decided 2022, I'm gonna do favorites. Monthly even? I know it's late for a January one. <laughs> um, so we'll just call this one current favorites. Uh, and then moving forward, you know, we'll do it monthly. This one is very much gonna be more beauty makeup centric, but we are popping it off with the activity, the craft that I have been obsessed with uh, for a while now. And I really haven't even posted about it. And that is punch needling. Look at my Amy Oxford punch needles. This is a punch needling creation. I think this is my most recent like completed one. But as you can see, it's all these little individual yarn. And you just punch it through. It's made on something called, here's the bag. Bag's not cute, this one. Uh, it's on monk's cloth. And uh, for this one, like I just put it on a hoop and punched away. I've been starting to get into like shaping and cutting. Um, this is kind of like the handmade version of tufting, which is what you do to make, you know, rugs. I, that's the next step, I think, in my progression, but I feel like I want to stick with punch needling a little while because I'm still really into it and I know myself, and I feel like if I get a tufting gun, then I'm gonna go all out on that. I actually don't really have many examples of my punch needling because I've given them all away for like gifts, but I do have like these little coasters, which were kind of like tester coasters for me to try out like new uh, methods of doing this. So this one I shaved. <laughs> so that kind of look compared to, let's see, let's see this one is not shaved you see that kind of texture i think i'm going to do a video on my whole process uh, of a larger mirror piece it might take me a minute because it's a pretty large piece and i'm like just kind of in the planning stage but if you can't wait that long you can actually learn how to punch needle from today's sponsor which is skillshare skillshare is just sick it is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn there are actually so many classes on skillshare that i am interested in so obviously there's a lot of crafting classes i actually watched one recently on like shaping uh for punch needling which it's definitely a skill to learn how to shape these kind of things. So I've watched a bunch of things on it. The number one thing that I'm excited to do on Skillshare actually right now is uh, their classes on Procreate, which is the app on the iPad. I've been drawing out like all my designs and stuff just on paper, but for a much larger piece, I feel like I just need to have it digitalized. And if I wanna do like multiples of something, if I wanna do a design again, it's just nice to have it there. But Procreate's really confusing. I was trying to figure out how to use it by myself and it was not okay. So they have like a really in-depth like beginner's class on it. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that next. This year I wanna invest more in my personal growth, you know, and just learn things that I've been wanting to learn. Definitely check out Skillshare. I think you'll be really surprised by the variety of classes on there. Of course, there is a link in my description and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Go ahead, invest in yourself. Invest in your creativity, your big brain. I think it's good to make that a priority of this year. <laughs> let's move on to some, let's do skincare stuff. Starting with this lotion here. This is the Duke Cannon Bloody Knuckles Hand Repair Balm. This is fragrance free. You might have noticed, you might not have, but my fingers are messed up right now. Like my eczema on my hands is just, so bad, I I really need to go see a specialist because I've gotten three different kinds of creams from the doctor at this point and nothing works. It also like 
spread to my face. Something's happened in my body. I feel like when I turned 31, my body was like, we are confused. <laughs> I have these band-aids on here and I know it's not good to bandage up eczema, but like this part of my hands have so many cracks that are bleeding that like, it's like every time I bend my finger, it like cracks and bleeds more and it's just so painful. And you know what? Like I just, I just need to put a bandaid on it so that it doesn't move around. I have at least 20 hand creams throughout the house. And I kind of got this one on a whim from Target. It had really good reviews. I feel like it's very much marketed towards like men, like bloody knuckles. But I love that it is fragrance free. It has a really interesting texture in that it's thick, but it's not greasy. It doesn't leave a residue on the hands and it absorbs, but there's like a bit of a protective layer. There's, it's like such a sweet spot that a hand lotion has to be in where it absorbs into the skin, but not so much that it completely disappears, but it can't leave so much of a residue that it bothers you just to have it on your hands. It's formulated to repair the hands of workers, fighters, and world champions. Um, the only thing I wish is that it would come in a squeezy tube because this is not very sanitary, obviously, but you know, whatever. Okay, so like I mentioned before, my skin's been going crazy. So it was like a couple, maybe a month ago, my chin area looked insane. I had gotten a ton of eczema, which was really itchy. So obviously like I was kind of itching it and I think that was irritating my acne. So then I was getting pimples and eczema just all up in here and it was so irritated. Thankfully, one of the eczema creams that I had gotten worked on my face. So I'm still currently using it because anytime now that I forget to use it or stop using it, I can see it like kind of creeping up. So I'm still using that one, but I've been trying to use very calming products. Uh, so the daily moisturizer, daytime moisturizer that I've been loving is this one from Ren Clean Skin Care. This is the Ever Calm Global Protection Day Cream. I really like Ren as a brand, by the way. So this is a best-selling day cream specifically formulated for dry, sensitive, or stressed skin. I know that I can use this cream though, and it is dependable. It is a really nice texture. It absorbs into the skin, um, definitely a little bit heavier than other day creams that I've tried. A little bit of give here, a little bit of slickness. It does eventually settle down a bit, but yeah, it's not gonna completely absorb into the skin. It has powerful antioxidants, black currant seed oil, omega-3s, vitamin E. If you're just looking for a very straightforward, really nice day cream, you might wanna look into this one. I feel like I wanted to do like a full skincare video sometime soon, but because all that crazy stuff was happening, I was like trying to keep it really, really simple. Um, one product that honestly I feel like really helped is this decompress oil from True Botanicals. This is a CBD 500 anti inflammaging treatment oil. Again, another product just to help soothe my skin because it was just so itchy and irritated and so textured. And I felt like this product, when I put it on, I would put it on like right before I would lay down to go to bed. Like I would put a couple drops in my hands and this, I still do this and I kind of like pat it and just pat it very lightly all over my face and then into my hands and then just kind of lie there. Real still, real still. I feel like it really did soothe that skin without like clogging my pores or anything. CBD is just amazing for inflammation. I remember the first time that I actually used it, the next morning, I was just like, first of all, felt like my skin looked very radiant and not like in an oily way, just like very healthy looking. And I felt like the like redness had gone down. It just looked calmer. So, after that night, I was like, I am a believer of this. I use so little, like two drops. And I like, pat it and I pat it all over my face. 
the reason why this is half empty or more than half empty, this is the only thing that Josie has knocked over with her tail. I don't know why, but this was sitting on my coffee table and I never do this. I, it was like, like that. And I was actually talking, I was actually in my therapy appointment. I'm pretty sure I was like crying and Josie kind of jumps down and I see this bottle just get knocked off my coffee table. And I so quickly like run over and pick it up. It's like already like, you know, halfway in the carpet. It was a very dramatic, very, very dramatic moment. This is like the worst thing that Josie could have ever knocked over. Clearly not her fault though. Again, another fun little story that y'all did not need to hear. Uh, I love the scent of this. It's quite strong. Is it jasmine? I know, okay, there's rose hip seed oil in there. I feel like it's not just rose though. It does have a, kind of an herbal floral scent to it. If you smelled anything from True Botanicals, you kind of know the zone that the scent is in, but it smells so, so good. I really do look forward to using this every night. Last skincare product I'm gonna talk about, I had to cut out like three things because I'm taking too long, uh, is this Fresh Floral Recovery Calming Mask, surprising. <laughs> this is a gentle daily leave-on mask. It helps your skin recover from visible signs of discomfort for a smooth, soft, more even toned complexion. You do like a, a nice layer of this for five to 10 minutes and you can actually, after that time, massage the excess into your skin more. It's kind of like you're letting this layer kind of sit on your skin to be absorbed. And then after five to 10 minutes, you're helping it along even more. And uh, you can leave it on overnight. I don't know why, but I always tend to do masks like early evening. And it just seems a little bit too early for me to do my nighttime skincare. Um, so what I'll do with this is I'll do exactly what the instructions say, but instead of letting it completely like rub in into my face, I'll sometimes kind of like blot it off because it is, you know, quite thick. I know I already said this about the True Botanicals product and really this is not a common thing that happens to me, but I felt like I saw fairly like immediate results. Like my skin looked calmer after I use this. And by the way, for it being called a floral recovery calming mask, it does not have a strong scent. Very subtle floral scent. It's like hardly in there. If that would have been an issue for you, just FYI. Okay, so before we dive into makeup, I wanna talk about one hair thing. I recently got my first haircut from my friend Ariana. Um, it definitely was over like a year since I got a trim. She just added a bunch of layers in my hair because I had just, you know, been growing it out pretty much from one length. I really did need some layers cause it was just so heavy, but I definitely lost a little bit of length and um, my buns aren't as, you know, secure. Like my hair isn't twisting together uh, and staying. You can see like little, some little flyaways and I don't mind that, but Especially now I have been using these hair ties. They're, oh, I actually never even said this out loud. Utiles, 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 beauty. <laughs> they are really unassuming. Um, so first of all, actually, you can get this acrylic box, which is very nice little display for your hair ties or you can just get uh, like, it's like a paper box. So you could, you know, get this one first and then refill it with that one. You wouldn't think that this would be an amazing hair tie. They stretch out a ton. And when you are tying your hair, it just catches it so well and it doesn't come loose. I don't know what magic or trickery is in this because if you just saw this as a like you would never think that this was a good hair tie Ariana actually used these hair ties on my hair for my sister's wedding and My hair did not budge a bit and I have really slick straight hair Some hair ties just don't work in my hair. It'll come right out. I will say it It stretches out and like, you know stays stretched out way faster than other hair ties, but I found that you can still just keep using it. Actually, I was using one for so long that I ended up like tying, it was like really, really stressed out. And I tied a knot 
in it to make it smaller. And then I kept using it for like, I felt like it was like two months. They definitely are a little bit pricier for hair ties, but once you use it, you'll understand. I'm just saying. I can't wait for daylight savings to happen, by the way. It's 3.30 right now. And cause I live at the foot of a small mountain, the sun is gone. So this, this is why the light's changing so much, apologize. Um, let's move on to some makeup. Fenty Beauty, Ease Drop. I am in number five. This is their Blurring Skin Tint. On the daily, I just want a tinted moisturizer, tint, just a very light layer on the skin just to even out my skin tone. And this is exactly what I want in a daytime product. I hope it shows up on camera, but like I can definitely see a huge difference in my skin tone uh, when I use this, even though my real skin is shining through. Just like a my skin, but better kind of product, you know? A couple days ago, my skin was just like peeling like crazy for no reason. It was just so weird. I felt like it wasn't like a sunburn kind of peel. It was like a soft skin peel, but it was happening all around my nose and like it's still happening on my cheeks and all around my mouth. So strange. This definitely caught on that skin, but I don't think, I don't think any product would not catch on that skin. It wasn't just like a little bit of dryness. It was like peeling happening. So I'm not gonna fault this for catching on that skin. When I don't have that, or when I just have a little bit of dryness and dry patches, it doesn't catch that skin. So just FYI. The concealer that I have been loving uh, is this one by Shiseido. I don't know how I've never heard anyone talk about this product. Maybe I just missed out on those, um, but my friend Ariana, again, wow, bring her up so much in this video, the one who did my hair, um, she used this on me for my sister's wedding, and I was like, I've never seen this product in my life. This is the Shiseido Sintro Skin Self-Refreshing Concealer. I am in 203 light. I know this tube looks teeny tiny, but a little goes a long way in like, it's weird cause it's not a really heavy concealer. It's a very light concealer. So I don't feel like you look caked, but the coverage is great. I would say this product would be best to me for like oily to normal and maybe slightly dry. I don't think it'd be necessarily great for very dry people because it does dry down a bit. Like I do see that it will kind of dry down into the, you know, little, little, little wrinkles underneath my eyes. Um, so I just kind of try and wipe that away as much as possible. But once it's on, it's set, it's so nice. There's a reason why Ariana uses this for wedding makeup, shoot makeup, because it like stays. It's a very small but mighty little concealer here. I have an eyelash primer that I wanna talk about, but I actually wanted to mention this really fast because I, I just got this palette. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Biba palette. I have like these two colors here on my eyes and then as like a liner. I love Natasha Denona, like these little mini palettes. It's really creamy. The mattes go on really nice. It's probably, today I'm not sure if I'm blended the best. I'm not great at blending darker colors. Like this eye makeup for me is pretty dark. Um, the one that I typically use is this one here. This is the mini nude palette by Natasha Denona. And I use, in the same place. I'll use like this color. So it is significantly darker, I feel like. Just big shout out to these little mini palettes from Natasha Denona because I always gravitate towards them. I just seem to have more patience and blend better with the darker one. No fault to them. Um, but the uh, eye product that I really wanna talk about here is this L'Oreal Voluminous Base. I didn't know that Mark Jacobs Beauty, when I don't know if he like went out of business or something, or it's just no longer here. And the Mark Jacobs primer, my favorite lash primer, pretty much like of all time. And I remember I went to go like re, you know, restock on it 
because I really depend on that thing. I use it every single day that I wear makeup and it was just nowhere to be found. And I was like, what the heck is happening here? So I looked up dupes for that product and then this one came up. It's literally exactly the same. I couldn't believe it. And it is a fraction of the cost, obviously. What it does is it just catches on the lashes elongates them and it is truly a primer for uh, mascara. So uh, my favorite mascara of all time, many years, Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. A primer just helps you get more mascara on your lashes without it becoming like a clumpy mess. It helps you, you know, elongate the lashes and it helps with like the life of the mascara. I would just say to anyone who wears mascara, who has short lashes at least, use a primer, cause it really just blows up the lashes. And I'm so happy that I found this dupe. Honestly, it might even be better than the Marc Jacobs one. Lastly, on the beauty front, we have my go-to lip. First product here is the Kajar Weiss. The name of the lipstick is believe and this is definitely a great match for my lip color and what i like to do with this is more so like pat it on maybe the bottom lip i'll like do a little outline on the edges and top more so pat and i feel like sometimes if you do a really opaque really lined out lip it just looks too formal you know? And then the gloss that I've been using is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Heat in Lemon Lava. And this product was definitely like a surprise for me because I have, I'm not a glitter lip gloss person. I just feel like it looks weird on my lips most of the time, but this one, I don't use too much of it and it's a bit of a plumper. Lips are starting to burn. A bit right now. And then that's why I like to have the lipstick underneath this because whenever I use a plumper, it tends to make my lips so red. That's just not a color that like I would want on my lips just for a casual look. So the layer of lipstick neutralizes the color, but I do feel like it makes my lips a little, a little fuller. Not for super long, but it might be more noticeable also for people, you know, with smaller lips. I feel like I'm I'm blessed with these naturally full lips. Both my mom and my dad have pretty full lips, so I don't exactly know who I exactly I got these from. Could, you know, be a combo, but I am very thankful to both my parents for you know, everything in my life, but definitely this face. <laughs> Can y'all tell, like I haven't filmed in so long, I don't know how to behave yet right now. <laughs> Actually, this happened so long ago, but I remember like this random comment. What did they say? They just kind of made this like comment about like it is so obvious that you've gotten your lips done or something. And I wanted just to be like, I think I might have responded, but I was just like, what is obvious about that? I feel like it's not, it, my, I don't feel like I look like I've gotten my lips done. I'm gonna come out here on this channel right now and say, up until this point, I have never gotten any work done on my face or my body. I am all natural. Not saying that, you know, I'm completely opposed to anything in the future, we'll see but nothing has ever been injected into me or taken out of me. <laughs> I think that I've gone a little bit crazy now because I've been sitting here for way too long. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. Thank you so much for sticking around with me. Let's make this regular thing again, because this was fun. And I really love y'all, hope you're doing okay. See ya in the next video. Thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me in this video. Again, link in bio. Okay, bye.